What is up, YouTube? I have been a little bit delayed and distracted with a bunch of life things happening here, so I have not had a chance to go through and get the rest of this done. Motor is out of this burnt up iron head. Uh, here is the bottom end. So today is the day. I'm going to blast this apart before I go back in and try and figure out how computers work. I still don't understand anything that I'm doing. So if you liked the last couple of videos, know that it's taken me significantly longer. If not, that's fine too. But getting better at it slowly but surely, learning new things. But today's goal is rip this worn out iron head apart so I can rebuild up the cases and get it fixed and roadworthy for the next 50 years. Okay, so first things first on this. Get rid of my stuff that I actually care about. Step on some dog toys, make some squeaky noises. This is drained of oil. However, there is still going to be a plethora of oil in there. So ideally, you would want to do this over some sort of pan. This 2x4 crate lid is what I'm going to be using because I don't really care about the inside of this as I try not to knock you guys over. Um, I don't have enough space. Normally I would do a motor tear down on my workbench, but there's a frame on there. And I don't want to take up the floor space in the garage yet. So lift motor, put it in this little contained area for oil to leak everywhere because that's guaranteed to happen and taking it apart. Normally, like I said, use like a big oil tray or a big cookie sheet. Uh, makes it a little bit easier. And we're not off to a good start. Okay, you guys are in my way. Let me reconfigure. I'll come back when this is in the little box. And a motor in the box. So we're good there. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, the kickstart starting gear needs to come off. So i got to pop the lock washer tabs down. Impact on this. We'll rip this off. And then yank the starter shaft that gets, gives us access to the four bolts for the transmission. Pull the four bolts on the transmission, drop the needle bearings everywhere inside the case. Organize those, push those off to the side. That will free up the back side of the motor. Then we'll go around to the other side. I gotta do some marking on the cam chest where the timing is kind of set. And then pull the cams and the ignition and the drive gears for the generator. So trans first, then we'll move on to the cam side. Okay, so we got the star washers. You do not want to use a screwdriver this big, typically. Not star washer, but the folded over lock washers. This is free to rotate. One, we got two. Those are free. Now I'll put the impact on here, rip that off. If you have air tools, this is a, one of those situations you will want an actual big impact. I don't hear. So we will use a electric impact. This is kind of unfortunate that we are trapped in a box here. So we can lay this over a little bit. Throw another socket underneath here. Give me a little support. Lots of Loctite on this motor. But there's your nut. Uh, you got your stepped shouldered side and your flat side. Once that is free, we'll wiggle off the kickstart gear. Lock washer, this will get replaced. This I'm probably going to reuse. It's not in the greatest of shape, but I think that should be fine. Or maybe I won't. It is an iron head. And kicking these over with slipping gears is not fun. Teeth on this don't look bad. It's just the stops that are a little, little worn. So there's that component. Now, I will spin this around because I just remembered. that I put a brand new sprocket on this. So now we're gonna flip it the other way, lay it down. Same type of thing on the sprocket. 
we have the safety lock washer that's folded over that we need to pound flat. inch and a quarter here. This is going to be kind of a pain. Most likely going to free spin here since I already have the chain off. If not, I'll show you how to do that. Let's see if I can get lucky and jam a screwdriver in here to break this free. I'm guessing probably not, but worth a shot. Screwdriver. Basically, I just bound this up in between the case and the sprocket. Locked that in place. Did not anticipate that actually working. Next. You do not want to hit the threads on this and booger those up with a hammer like I just did. But if you were paying attention, kept the face flat, just kind of tapped that end just to free it up. This is all new on here, so it doesn't have a ton of fluctuation. Locking that in place. I'm going to keep all these together, two different piles. So I got my starter gear over here. I'm completely out of workspace, so this is not the best way to do this. But you got the sprocket, kicker gear all set up over here. And while we're at it on this side, I'm going to pull out that speedo cable. I'm going to grab a pair of channel locks. Would have been really cool if I put all my tools away from the Falcon going to the track last week. Or a week and a half ago. It's been that long since I've done this. Tech cable. I step on that dog toy every two seconds. They might come and join us here in a little while too. Who knows? Okay. Now, here's our timing set up since it's all on this side. I think we're just going to stay on this side for a minute. Um, I was going to do the trans first, but now it's making more sense for me to keep it here. So I think what we're going to do instead is pop this free. Um, so Norm, I am way off the deep end on this. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here, but as far as I can tell, on any of the timing stuff, typically you throw a mark somewhere on here to reference where this sits. I'm looking at this right now. I will grab a Sharpie. I'm going to throw two marks as a quick reference. It will 100% need to be retimed, but it is fully electronic. There's no mechanical points open, points closed. I don't know what the parameters on this are. It looks like on here I have an advance. I have a set light. I have a rev limiter. And then a static timing dummy light. I don't know at all on this, so do not quote me. If I'm doing this completely wrong, please let me know in the comments if anybody's worked on one of these old power arc ignitions. However, I'm going to draw a line right through the center here where this is supposed to be. Just for a quick reference. This is the center of the bottom. Right there. Now we have two marks on the case, and then we're just going to pop these out. Like I said, I'm not overly concerned about this timing thing. Worst case scenario, if I don't end up running this, I like the idea of running it because it is very period correct, but I'm a points guy at heart. I have a ton of brand new mechanical point setups here. That I know how to do, it will go in, it will work, and I won't have any issues. Ooh, look at these fancy cups. So typically on like a Dyna S setup, it still uses the mechanical advance. Um, the 
Why am I forgetting the name right now? I'm blanking on the name. Ultima style, I think, has a cup on the backside. Look at this fancy cup. Got different adjustable pin settings and things that I can change. Like I said, I do have the instruction or manual for this for install. Haven't used it yet. But it looks like we got a Phillips or a flathead in the center here. So we're going to pop that one free. Like so. We got a washer. Let's see if I can pull this cup out. Hmm. Gentle. Grabbing the inside because I don't know what's affected on the outside. Just a little wiggle. Break it free of the keyway on the crank. Come on. Uh, where did my little screwdriver go? Players are falling apart on me here. Lots of play. Good old high quality. Was this Menards or something? There we go. Okay, so ooh, that's not good. On the back side, a standard iron head. So it looks like points might be going back in here. Uh, this is the slot in the crank for your ignition. Pretty straightforward. This is a plastic wheel for your timing for your fire. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the pins are for, why there's a series, why there's a single, but on the back side of this, look at how worn out that keyway is. That little ball of plastic that was probably once a plastic pin used to sit in that keyway. Yes, I could put this back in. Yes, it would probably hold and go back together for a minute at 6,000 RPMs. I don't know how well I trust a little plastic pin there. So, looks like we'll be going back to points. That's, that's unfortunate. I was really excited about that one. You can see the pin actually sheared off on this. Uh, the pin was supposed to be over here. It's now shifted all the way over there. So, if this is what was holding on, that means the timing on this bike was way wrong. What are you going to do? <laughs> Leave the bolts over here. Ignition stuff can stay over here. Then let's blast off this cam cover. Um, I do still have the rockers in. I don't know, or the lifters in. I don't know if I'm going to pull the lifter blocks out yet. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to have to. Everything's coming off. So let me grab some... Allen sockets and blast this cover apart. And I drill wherever I left that. If you're worried about this part and making sure all the bolts stay the same, in the same spot, a really good idea is take a cardboard box out of a beer can or, I don't know, I'm assuming most of you use Amazon since they own the world these days. Um, take a box, do a quick rough sketch of your primary. So let me see if I got a, something. I'm not going to do this this way, but here's your box, cam cover. And then you just put here, here, maybe I will use this. I'm already going through the motions of doing it. So now you got a quick little template of all of the bolts on the bolt pattern. It'll keep them in line. This one's been replaced, so that's kind of a goofy one. i got to grab a smaller socket. Then you just punch a hole with the screwdriver, drop your bolts in. Now you have your quick rough template of where everything is at, and it can stay that way. What 
is going on with this? Nowhere near the right bolt for this. This front corner, hopefully you guys can see that. Punch some holes in this box that we just used. So we got one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Now on the template for the box, grab the bolt that you just pulled out. This is the one on the side of the nose cone. If you want to get real, real detailed, grab your Sharpie, just for reference. There's our ignition cone. Again, I'm not really too concerned about this for me, but if you are doing this for the first time and a little nervous about going into it, this makes quite a difference in the grand scheme of keeping things organized and going back where they should, because these bolts are all different lengths. If you do enough of them, you know what goes where. But for those of you that have not, don't be scared. Just give it a shot. What's the worst? You can mess up everything. Try it. You don't know. It's all, it's all nuts and bolts. Just a big old tractor pump. Now we're going to grab the dead blow and start swinging away. Just kidding. When you are doing this, do not hit this top corner because there is no support on this back section where it meets up to the sprocket cover. Same thing on this bottom side, same thing over here. This is a meaty section and I'm not laying into it. I'm not pounding it in this way. I'm just trying to break the gasket free. So I'm giving it a little bit of upward pressure like that. A couple of taps, which will free up the gasket and ideally break it free from the gasket. Now, when you're doing the cam chest, several things can happen. Sometimes the cams will stick in the case. Sometimes they will stay in the bore. If you pull all of these off, and it's gonna change. If you're doing this in the bike or just doing a cam cover remover to like replace a gasket or change cams or anything like that, if it's in the bike, each one of the cams is pushing up on one of the push rods, so it's locked in on some of them. It won't be locked in on others depending on where you're at in your motor rotation. Uh, what I just did is, since I already pulled all the push rods and pulled all the heads, you really should pull all of the lifters too. And if you want to get really detailed, which I'm going to do on the end of this when I do reassembly, if you pull these lifter bores out, pull out the tappets and the lifters, you can actually measure what your cam end plate is on all of these before you take it apart. Would not be a bad idea to jot that down as a reference. So basically write down, okay, the rear was at X amount. This was at X amount. This was at whatever thou, this was at whatever thou. Then you have a reference for everything going back together. I'm gonna to be meticulous about making sure, one, that everything is coming out exactly where it came from and leave them all together when I take this apart. So once the cover's free, yank that off. All of the cams stayed in place like they should. And then now my ignition and cam are all, or cam chest are all fixed in together. I'm just gonna dangle this. I'm not taking the ignition out of here yet. But now you can go through and check all your bushings and make sure everything looks good. And first quick glance, I'm going to do this again off camera, but first quick glance, everything actually does look really nice. There's no major gouging, no wear, no brass filled everything in here. So that's good. And we are back. Uh, just took care of the dogs. Let them run around, grab them some bones so they can stay in the garage. It's a little chilly out here today. Not too bad for December and the Midwest, the lovely, lovely middle of Chicago and Milwaukee. Here is your cam chest. Looks super complicated. It is actually not too terrible. You got a pinion gear here, which drives off of the oil pump and also turns all of the different cams. Each one of these cams is marked with individual timing marks. So if we notice, and I don't know where this motor is currently sitting, 
Let's see if I can try and turn this around so they're all lined up like they're supposed to. Right about... Are we there? Can't really see. Okay, so rough, 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 rough. Just because everything's covered in oil and everything's dirty. Each one of these gears has teeth, obviously. And each one has timing marks. For example, let's start with number two, or the uh, rear intake. Rear intake is the important one. This is the brain for what everything else does. If we clean this up, hopefully this shows up on camera, we have a timing mark here, we have a timing mark here, and we have a timing mark over here. You have three on this gear. This one lines up with your pinion gear, and this is the fixed one to the crank. And then the other ones line up according to the marks on the teeth. So right here, that's why we can't see them, this is, the, this is the first one that drives everything else. So you got a double gear here. This one right, drives the rear intake. The upper one drives the, or sorry, this one. The smaller one drives the rear exhaust valve. The, this is your rear intake valve. The big one drives the, um, and they're all in, interconnected. So you got, it's a Sportster, so four cams. Cam for each valve. All of them are driven off this, so this is what drives from your pinion gear to the cam. The cams open your intake on the front and your exhaust on the rear. And then the last one is your exhaust valve or exhaust cam for the front cylinder. All of which are connected to the generator idler gear, whatever you call them, which turns your generator and gives you a voltage and electricity and charging. So, we are going to yank this all apart right now. I will do a much more detailed video when we go to put all of this back together. But, like I said, you could measure everything and shim everything. Well, the reason you guys can't see the timing marks right now is because we have these paper-thin shims on here. So, if I pull this shim off of the, number, uh, the rear cylinder exhaust cam, see that little line right there? That's lined up with the... I pull my hand. Hopefully that focuses line to line. So I'll put this shim back on here. Then we come around to the other side. This big shiny part is also a shim. So let's take that out. We got two on the front exhaust and we are line to line. It's one tooth off it looks like on that one. But I also just dropped the pinion back in. And then down here you have your pinion line. So we are line to line. So it looks like this one is actually I don't know, about half a tooth. I might be able to get that a little bit straighter. One tooth off. If we come around to the other side, yeah, we're one tooth off on that one. 100%, that's one tooth off. So that will be getting addressed. I will leave the shims on there for all of these. But now all the cams are free floating, so we're just going to yank these out. Pull up the lifters here. And then on the back side, I'll show you the next step here in a second. But if you pull these off, you got a spacer on the back side of the cam. You don't want to lose that. If they're shimmed, I think this is shim. Looks like a washer on there, or a spacer on there. But all of the cams are marked on the back. So you got 4P here, and they go 1, 2, 3, 4. So number 4. I'm just so you know what I'm doing when I'm off camera. I'm just organizing them, laying everything out on this cookie sheet because they are all covered in oil. So we have number 4. We have our idler gear. I think there's supposed to be a washer or something on there too. I can't take out this one yet because this one's in the way. So you're gonna yank that first. And I'll drop this back in. Now, once you pull the cams out, you also have a dog bone spacer at the bottom here, like so. I'm just gonna reassemble these exactly like they came out and leave them sitting over on the cookie sheet. The order or the timing section. Oh, that number four one had that spiral cut gear on the outside. That is your tack drive too. So if you were wondering what that one was, I forgot about that. But then we'll grab these two, leave the shims on so I don't lose them. If you are going to be doing a full, ooh, a little bit of wear here. 
the inside journal. I'm going to have to double check that once we get farther. But there's all the game gears. Leave them together. Leave the dog bone spacer on. I think it makes it a little bit easier. And actually, yeah, that's fine. Oil pump will come off. We'll do that later. Pinion's probably going to stay on because I don't plan on changing anything on the internals of this yet. But that is where we are at. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the um, lifters. So for the lifters, I'm just going to label these real quick. R-E. R-I. F-E. Or F-I, sorry. F-I. I don't know how well this is actually going to work. writing over grease f i and these will go out the exact same way that the top or the other ones did Ooh. be really careful on that lots of sharp edges i just sliced my finger wow that was really dumb now i got a bloody one inch straight through my finger awesome and this right here is exactly why i put the tray put all of this into a tray because there is a plethora of oil still in this motor. Then, while we're on this side, since I took off the kicker gear already, I'm also going to take off the kicker shaft. This is a little bit goofy before we get to the lifters. Come over here. Uh, we have the kicker shaft that goes through. Now, I could just yank this out. If you're not paying attention or haven't done this before, the complicated part about iron heads when it comes to reassembly is making sure you get all of the detailed parts that need to go in first. Now, I could have this kicker shaft out, and if you go to reassemble this motor out, or reassemble this with the kicker stuff out, it is doable. It is a huge, huge, huge pain in the ass. I really like getting the bottom ends kind of set up with all the kicker gear and clutch stuff in. I don't mind doing cylinders and heads in the frame because of things like this. However, as I mentioned in the last video, you have an aluminum bracket that mounts to the frame that also connects the cases of the motor. So instead of having a direct connection between the motor and the uh, frame, like you do on big twins, on sporties, they have a rear mount and they have the front motor mounts. On the sportsters in particular, if it's kickstart, if it's not kickstart, you don't have to worry about it. But if it is a kickstart and you have the shaft, it goes through the motor mount hole here. And I've seen it a ton of times where people will just kind of get excited and yank this out. And they're like, all right, cool, we're, we're good. Well, this is the detent that locks onto the back side of the case. If you assemble this without this piece, which you can do and still bolt everything in, you don't have your lock here. Do not forget that part. So make sure that those come out together and stay together. And when you reassemble... Make sure you don't leave out this spacer when you go to slide it through. I like leaving them together like this because when I go to reassemble this, I'll wipe all this down, clean it up a little bit, jam it through. Oh, wait, i got to put that spacer in. Don't forget it. Very important part. I've seen it tons of times where that's been missing or uh, they haven't been paying attention when they took it apart and that goes dropping across the floor or they forget about it. So, little disclaimer there. It's also kind of a pain because there's a seal on the back side of this too. Don't forget it. Assemble all this stuff first before you put the bottom end back in. Do yourself a favor. All right. Uh, I'm going to tape off my hand real quick because it's bleeding pretty good. And then grab the Allen key to pop out these lifters. Box. Quarter inch here. Single bolt. my life these days. Super grabby today. Looks like somebody had this drilled at one point. Like a safety wire through these. It's kind of neat. Maybe it was a race bike. So I'm going to do these by hand because I got sick of trying to pull the sockets off of these. Bolt, bolt. And I'm 
throwing all of this on the cookie sheet for now. Next Sportster tip. Okay, uh, lifter blocks. This is aluminum. Case is aluminum. Not that strong. A lot of people come in and try prying on this and do that. Don't do that. It's bad for it. You can crack things, you can break things pretty easily. But if you take these that are kind of stuck, hit them with a dead blow, it's nice and safe, and get these rockers pivoting, or lifters pivoting, gives you much more wiggle room. You guys are right in front of me. To try and break these free. Now, if I come over here, I have a leverage point and I'm not prying on the case, I'm prying on the steel here. I'm not going crazy, but just opening this up enough to give me a little room. Once they start coming up, they usually tend to free up a little bit more too. Like so. And they should slide up and out of the bore. So I'm keeping all of these together. I do have kind of temporary labels on these. I also like to do, just give a quick feel on the actual lifter bearing, make sure that's all good. This one actually feels pretty good. So we have rear exhaust, and then we'll lay these out the same way that the cams came out. sell a fancy tool for this as well. And I literally just did what I told you guys not to do. Why do you guys pay attention to what I do on the internet? You should reconsider your life decisions. tool basically clips around this and pulls up on them. Uh, these right here are actually a little bit tighter than I wanted them to be. This one's about what I expected. That's what kind of what I want. The other ones took a little more abuse. But this front one on the other hand, pry it up, get underneath it. That's how they're supposed to come out. I don't know if it's just corrosion or oil or what, but maybe fire and charge stuff. Again, probably would have been a good idea to blow off everything in this motor, but it's all coming apart and we'll get a deep clean before any of it goes back together. Now our lifters are out, everything else is free. Where do I want to begin? I'm gonna leave this seal. In all honesty, I'm trying not to take too much off of the right side case because that's good. Other than quick cleanup and getting all of the fuzz and insulation and fire debris out of this, I plan on slapping this motor right back together. Let me flip this back on its side, and then we'll yank the oil pump while we're over here. Well, I got sick of running around in my other side of the toolbox, so I stopped at Harbor Freight earlier today and bought a crappy set of sockets and the cheapest little socket tray they had. Well, I didn't realize until just now because I never looked. I grabbed a half-inch one, which doesn't help me on this, but, sorry. I digress. However, uh, with the crappy sockets. This is much easier for me. I needed a separate set for my extra tray anyway, but they also have all the safety stuff in here because people steal parts and tools, which I get. It's always been a thing. People steal stuff all the time. However, why go to Harbor Freight and steal a crappy set of... I mean, I think the socket set was $12.99. <laughs> They're sockets. You will get $12.99 worth of use out of them. And if they break or you lose them, it doesn't matter. I don't know. I just don't think that'd be worth my time to try and steal crappy tools. Not that I would go out of my way to steal anything anyway. I like to think of myself as a pretty upstanding guy most of the time. But 
I don't think a cheap budget set of sockets would be in the cards of me trying to steal anything. Either way, uh, I digress. We have the oil pump. You have one, two, three, four, five bolts along the bottom. Oh okay, whoever built this motor, I don't know who had it. I don't know who assembled it. I don't know who did anything in the past. However, please stop using Allen's and regular hardware on every single thing that I need to take off and touch. Super inconvenient. Not the end of the world. I have the tools to do it. However, it's just sloppy. I mean, even during assembly, I would be pissed if I had to keep running back and grab a different tool. Especially if you're one of those clean people that puts all their stuff away immediately when they're done with it. I'd be coming back and forth a million times to try and do this. Nope, I lied. I retract my statement. They were all bolts. They were just covered in oil and looked like they weren't bolts. My apologies. Look at me. Crap talking. See what happens when you talk smack? <laughs> Bites in the ass. Okay. So, uh, they are all 7 sixteenths. Just mismatched hardware. Got a nylock on one, I got lock washers on some, I got flat washers on the other. No rhyme or reason. Just a mess of oddities. But, now, I'll set my hardware behind me before I lose it studs and then one chrome bolt for the oil pump. Give me a second. A right. couple quick taps with the dead blow, like so, just to loosen it up. Now I'll take a big old screwdriver and I'm not going to pry on this like crazy, but I kind of want to walk it off. Your oil pump drive connects to the back side of the pinion gear up top, so you don't necessarily want to just wrench on this thing or start hul hulking on it. And then you might have to tweak the... Um... No, you shouldn't have to because you're coming straight down. Sometimes if for whatever reason it's bound up on the teeth, you might have to move the crank just a hair to give yourself a little bit more room. However... Once you get that free, I'm using this as leverage, I'm not pushing hard, just giving myself a little bit more leverage from the inside of this. I wanted this to stay on though, just so I don't lose anything. Like so, and there is your oil pump. I will take the one extra long bolt that I have here this kind of drain a little bit but I'm going to drop that right back in just so I know it's all together and the rest of the studs and washers will go right back on the case since that case is not getting taken apart one, two three one two three four put this right in the important tray of individual parts do not do what I'm doing on the back side you can't see it on camera and it's going to stay that way because I have my cookie sheet of important parts that need to stay together dangling on the end of a scissor lift, which is not at all what you want to do. I'm just out of space or buckets or containers and don't want to make a bigger oily mess than I have to. Cookie sheet getting dirty has no effect on me whatsoever. The rest, ooh, these studs are super loose too. All right. And there we have it. Oil pump is removed. Um, I think I'm going to leave these in for now. Seems like an okay idea at the moment. I will let you know when it backfires or they get in my way later and I bend the studs. But for right now, those are going to stay there. Then, in order to get the case bolts out while we're still on this side, I need to pull this tack drive because you have a bolt under here that will most likely bottom out when you get to this section. So let me grab a wrench.
probably the wrong size. Just grabbing an adjustable for right now. Like so. Typically these don't get hulked in too tight. But we'll get this out now because I will forget that later. Don't quote me just because I haven't done one of these ones in a really long time. Thought there was supposed to be an O-ring on there. Maybe I'm wrong. I just don't know. I know just enough to get myself in trouble. I am by no means an expert. Now we are ready to get access to some of these case bolts, but we're not there yet. I still got to take out some stuff on the other side. I actually don't remember if the pinion has to come off to pull the cases. I might need to take a quick look at that. Um, I am going to pull the motor mount off right now, though. Since we're still over here, let me grab my sockets. I'll show you what that looks like. So on this side, we have the motor mount. 916 onto the studs. One. Two. Come on, one's gonna fight me. And then the other two upper ones we already actually took out earlier when we were pulling the oil tank. So these will come out as well, and then I'm just gonna put them right back where they belong with the mount removed. We got bolt, bolt. Thought I dropped a washer. Definitely threw a nut over here, so we're gonna do that. And I was really hoping that was gonna work. Grab my ratchet. Whew. Shit. Come on, lock into your box. Like so. Okay, now our motor mount is free. We're gonna use a big screwdriver pry bar to kind of try and lock this back up. Oh, actually that might have to stay there until the case comes out because it bottoms out on this side. Forgot about that. But that's free, so it should be quick and easy when we get around to pulling the cases or splitting the cases. Stud up on the one oil pump. I don't need loose thread getting banged around. Okay. This is the retainer gasket for the transmission bearings, which is fine. These I'm going to set on my tray of parts. I got my lifter bolts and everything else over here. Adding all my hardware. Like I said, be a little bit more organized, it will help you in the long run. I've done a handful of these, I'm not overly concerned about any of that yet. You want to get a washer? I know where most of these parts go without having to think about it, so should be okay. And I think that's about it on this half of the motor, other than the case bolts. So lay this over onto the primary side and make a big old mess of the transmission. So on the transmission side we have, let me get rid of my 916s here real quick, half inch. Four bolts, not too terrible. Standard thread, nothing crazy. Not fine thread. Typically, I believe the older Harley stuff. 
uses. Any of the steel hardware going into the case is always going to be coarse through. And any steel on steel parts tended to be um, fine thread. Now, uh, with the transmission, you're going to lose a ton of parts on the back side of this. Uh, you're probably going to lose a gear or two. You're definitely going to lose a ton of needle bearings. So all I did here, faithful dead blow, reach around to the backside, and I'm hitting the sprocket shaft with a dead blow on the back. Don't use a steel hammer and mess anything up. However, with the dead blow on the sprocket, I don't know if that's going to pick up on the sound, but all of my bearings from the inside of this transmission just fell onto the ground or the bottom of the trap door. Then I lost a ton of gears. Counter shaft came out. That's kind of what I didn't want to happen. Probably could have assisted that a little bit better, but I'm just going to roughly throw this back together. Nothing too crazy right now. I'm just dropping parts back on roughly where they go. I will go through all of this at a later date. But it looks like stuff in here it looks pretty nice. If you push on the counter shaft at the bottom, which I did not do. Come on. In this case, sometimes they'll stick on the trap door and come out together. In my case right now, they did not. You end up with a ton of gears and a ton of parts all over the place. But most of them only go together one way. So here's kind of where we're at. On the early transmissions, this is that speedo drive that I was talking about. Um, this is going to be a little bit new for me. Make sure you do set the counter shaft down and wipe off real quick. And then I'll bring you down and show you what I'm looking at on the inside. There's a good amount of spacers on the transmission. So you got these end spacers, these little bearings covered in grease that are stuck. You do not want to lose those. So I'm going to take those off. Now, if we get down into the actual case, you'll see this washer that's kind of sliding down here, right here. Don't lose that. Don't forget about it. Make sure that goes back onto the counter shaft on the gear side, like so, just so those all kind of stay intact. I'm going to set this on the cookie sheet behind me. I'm running out of room on my cookie sheet. This might actually just stay right in here. Um, and I got all of these needle bearings that I need to find throughout this box. I'm just going to make this oily mess of a engine stand work table, the place where all of my internal trans parts are. All of this needs to be disassembled, gone through, cleaned up, thoroughly inspected, and then reassembled. So I'm not too worried about that right now. Just get it apart, go through everything on reassembly, and split that up that way. Now, the only other part that we need to worry about is, sorry, I'm trying to let you guys see inside of this trans. Hopefully that works. This is our shifter right here. We're gonna try and yank that one out as well. It's super dirty, super grimy. And there's a seal on the other side that might get in your way. There's your shifter. Leave that in my trans bin of parts. I'll leave the transmission over here. Uh, this part of the trans, since everything's still assembled and together, I'm actually gonna set over on the other bench just for now, and then it'll move back to where it's gonna live in here once we get the case apart. But there you have it. That's a bottom end disassembly and a transmission removal. All in one video. Where else can you go for this kind of education? It's been a fun little ride. I have ripped apart my iron hood. XLCH. Uh, it's a 72, 73-ish, 71 to 74. I don't remember exactly on the years. I've had a couple. Uh, it's on the right-hand side, though. Uh, right side shift, I mean. So it is in that 78 to 73 wheelhouse of internals. It is an early 900 motor, which makes me think it's 71, 72, somewhere around there, maybe 72, 73. Don't quote me. I'm not an expert on any of this. I just know enough to get myself in trouble and think it's a good idea to rip apart entire motors to weld up cases. So this is the case. These are the bungs. Crappy cold welds on there, still broken. It's also cracked up here on the top side of the primary. So lots of primary work to do on this motor. 
Not that big of a deal. I bought this for a song. So, motor's out. You'll see the video. You've already probably seen the video if you follow the channel. If you haven't, like, comment, subscribe. We got uh, Tell Your Friends. We're doing a bunch of Harley stuff in here this winter. Typically, shovel heads are my go-to. I started on iron heads. I'm kind of growing back into that. The uh, metal that I will be using, there's another 71, 72, 73, what is that? Yeah, 72 on the casting. Uh, that was the original iron head motor in my chopper. Primary tensioner shoe bolt backed off, wedged in between this chain and exploded. So chunks of engine and all of the oil immediately exited the motor onto my leg at about 50 miles an hour going down the road. Awesome time. Whatever. Live and learn. Slapped that motor back together, rode the crap out of that bike until I sold it, then got into the shovel head stuff. But if you're here, I don't know how long it's going to take. I did a full teardown video on this. I have not uploaded. I have not looked at anything in editing. It might be too long. Unless you're into those super long-winded videos where they show every detailed step of every single thing. I love those uh, quite a bit. Most of the world does not have the attention span for that. So I'm probably going to cut this down into a couple parts. I did the head removal. I did the cylinder top end removal, if you will. Which was still a little bit longer than I like to post videos of. I think that was about 25 minutes. Uh... The bottom end removal video was second. Now I will have a complete bottom end teardown. So here's the bottom end, completely disassembled. Here's the transmission over here on the bench, on the other bench, and a bin of parts and cylinders and heads and all the fun things that I need to mess around with, as well as the other case that will have an entire section just on the case itself. I gotta talk to my buddy that's gonna give me a hand on that. He's a welder. Uh, see if he wants to film slash promote his shop. He's awesome. He helps me out all the time on these stupid projects where I attempt it first. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I got a guy that I go to. In this case, he's giving me a hand on this one. He helped me on another iron head that had an entire exploded rear case as opposed to just a bung. And it runs like a top. So that's that blue one. You've seen it on there. I think I went over that in one of the other videos. Either way, this will be the introduction to the transmission removal from an iron head bottom end outside of the bike. If you're looking for one in the bike, I will try and work on that next time I have to do it. But out of the bike, it doesn't really matter. You can get to the trans, you can pull the whole trans in the bike. In this case, the same concept applies. Watch the video. If you are looking at how to pull a transmission and don't know what you're doing, a primary teardown video is not going to be there because I've had this bike before I started the channel and already had the primary stuff off. However, I will be posting a reinstall video. Watch it backwards, and it shows you how to put a primary in. Kind of, sort of. A um, couple other things to check, but trans is out, everything else is out. It's not a super detailed step-by-step. -step. Be careful of everything, because I've built six or seven of these. Much more comfortable with shovel heads. Either way, there you have it. Iron head, transmission teardown video.